Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug-and-play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass-through component in case you experience a failure on board here, it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty. So we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. All right, here we've procured a bone stock-ish Kawasaki Ninja 636 2019 plus for our video demonstration. So you can see it already has our TST Industries fender eliminator. And if we had installed our integrated tail light on this bike, then the functions of the brake light modulator would be redundant. If you guys are considering one of our programmable tail lights, then just know that we do have a programming button here that cycles you through all the programs on board this tail light, and it has all of those brake light modulator functions already built in, so it's one unit instead of having to mount a secondary unit on a stock uh, tail light. Furthermore, these are plug and play factory type installation, really easy and nice stuff. So if you're considering that, check us out, tstindustries.com. For the purpose of this installation, we do have a harness that is vehicle specific. Your brake light modulator will terminate into a four conductor plug and then branch out to the OEM connectors that are contained under here. Just a moment, I will show you how to break down the bike to the appropriate level and get that installation done. Let's first take the seats off on this particular bike. The driver's seat comes off first, and then you have a pull cable here that removes the passenger seat. And then we will knock out four push fasteners. One, two, three, four. These are the type where you press in the center to unlock them, and then they withdraw, and you reset them by putting them in this orientation. At this point, I will switch to a four millimeter Allen. I will remove these six fasteners. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now just note where each one goes. We have longer ones, bottom, top, and a shorter one here. This one goes into a mechanical fastener underneath. These go into rubber well nuts. Make sure they get back in their proper locations when you're done.
All right. Now we'll be removing these panels off the bike one by one. I'm going to start with the right. In the aft section here, there is a ratcheting tab that we have to be very, very careful about. You don't want to just yank it out. Have to make sure that we finesse it out. It has to get this panel has to get pushed up while this down and we just move it around mush it around a little bit till that clears and after that clears is just a bunch of friction fasteners one's right here it just has to be pulled straight out from the center plane of the bike there are two more one's right here now pay attention here Oftentimes, when these bikes get a little bit older, the friction fastener, the peg that goes into the rubber grommet, actually pulls out the grommet. So as soon as you take these off, make sure that you inspect for all the grommets still being in place. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. This last friction fastener is here. So we have a total of three. One, two, three. This one, however, I like to rotate this panel a little bit and then pull these apart. This is because there is a tab under this black piece that interfaces with a interference window here. I want to clear that first before we start yanking on it. All right, so here you see I have one rubber and then I have this peg that fits into a rubber here. But here in the aft section, as I was trying to dislodge it, the grommet actually came out. So I'm going to have to put it back in. It has a larger flange, flange and a smaller flange. Smaller one fits into the fairing, larger one out of the fairing. Okay. And now this will mount back up on the way back in properly. Had that been missing, we would not have proper engagement. So again, on the left side here, we clear the rear tab. I forgot to show you guys the tab actually. It's probably a good time to show you. It does have a hook type geometry that goes into this window and interferes downwards. So up and out, same thing on this side, up and out. I actually just cleared it. Let me repeat that step. Nice and gentle. And once again, that rubber piece came off. So I'm gonna have to fish it out, rotate, pry, Good to go here. And where'd this guy go? I see him. So I'm gonna quickly reinsert this grommet here. Make sure that on the way back in, the reinstallation's all nice and smooth. Okay, that is looking pretty good there. At this point, we have access to this panel here. It has two push fasteners here still. We're going to leave them intact. That creates a nice hinge that just holds this up for us and makes it nice and handy. Within this boot, there will be a number of connectors that go to your fender lighting equipment in this particular bike. They have been eliminated and um, so we won't consider any of this. I'm just pointing it out because it may look a little bit different on your bike. We're going to open up this clip and push our wiring to the side. We have our taillight wiring coming here through this loom up to this area where you see the connector. The connector is hung on the frame via this clipping feature. If we collapse the leaflets on the clip, that permits that plug to come out. And now we have easy access to unplugging it. So again, little leaflets here. Collapse them, goes right through. On the opposite side, here is the locking feature for the actual tail light connector. I like to put a little screwdriver in there to unlock it and withdraw it. And via the use of our harness, our vehicle specific harness, this is all really just plug and play. Push it in till it clicks. Push the receiving plug here till it clicks. And we are now ready to connect our brake light modulator. Before I do that, I'm going to figure out where I want to place it and also 
what I want to do with these plugs. We have the ability for you to choose this one or this one going on the frame. It really is kind of redundant. What I'm going to do here is just loop it over like this. Push our original connector into the frame. And the other connector can rest beneath it or you can actually stuff it into this boot because there is definitely enough space in there. We do provide sealed connectors, but if you feel better having even your sealed connector within a boot, it's certainly up to you and it's not a downgrade. So let's do that. All right. Now our brake light modulator plugs into this four conductor plug here. And now it's just a matter of figuring out where, where we want to physically hang the brake light modulator. We do ship these with two wire ties, one of which should always be placed around this nifty channel that we've designed into the enclosure. The housing is meant to be held onto a frame component or another piece of harnessing and having the tie in this channel fixes it in place. This is of course, assuming that you guys have already opened this and preset this to the rate, the flash rate and the effect that you're looking for, unless you're comfortable with what it comes preset with, and that's fine too. If you haven't done that yet, I would say do it before you tie it off to a frame component. I'm gonna hang this unit here. I just like this location. So, all right, I'm just gonna loosely leave it here for now. I'm gonna test it real quick. Before I go too far, I wanna make sure that I have the function, and indeed I do. That's good to go. And now, honestly, you could possibly tie it off to the outside because there is enough room here. Let me see. Yeah, there's enough room. So I'm actually gonna tie it off to the outside. It keeps my trunk compartment a little bit neater. I'm going to reconfigure this wire routing, get it to the outside of the frame. And if you notice, I always point the grommet down on a down slope or vertically down in case there's any incident water getting into the compartment, it will flow down, never up into the unit. Unit is sealed, but I don't like to ask for trouble. There we go. Simple as that. That is gonna remain in there until it's needed to be cut out to readjust or something like that. We distribute the bulk of the wires under here, make sure that they don't snag anything at any point. I'm gonna shove this connector back into the boot like we described before. It's a little tight in there sometimes. All right. And now I'm gonna rerun all these harnesses through the guide clip. That's looking good. Everything's looking good at this point. I only used one wire tie here. I believe that'll suffice on this particular bike. So let's start putting some panels back on. I'm gonna start with these push fasteners because they're the easiest thing to put in. And then I'm gonna replace these screws. If you remember, we had a long one down at the bottom, long one at the top, and then short one in the middle. If you noticed in the beginning, I was using a power tool to get these things out on the way back in. I always use a hand tool. Let me tighten these down first. Go to bottom out and here you're gonna feel some resistance because you're actually engaging mechanical fasteners against each other. Here, 
in those four locations, you have rubber well nuts. All you're going for is to expand that mushroom in the rubber. You won't feel a hard bottom. Please do not over tighten these. All right. We can replace the seats in the reverse order of disassembly. And that is that, 10 minutes to success. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from their receiving threads and leave them in the cap. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes. With the brake pressed, press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise. And that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is a pulser. And this one just keeps on flashing. So I like to have it going pretty fast here. Choice is really up to you. If you want to explore the next mode, we have the intermittent pulser. This one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range, makes it the most visible. But again, freedom means choice. The decision is ultimately up to you. Once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you want to be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap, turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you des decided to keep it and you're good to go.